Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Nut Producer Magazine, reporting to you here from the Nut Growers Society summer tour this year held at Matt Miller's farm. We had a great lineup of speakers and, and live demonstrations. This year, this the entire summer tour was held on the farm, so it's, it's been a long time since they've held a meeting like that with the Nut Grower Society, so it's it's been pretty exciting. What would you say with all the all the farmers and tractors and trucks that were everywhere? Yeah, it's great being on, on the farm for the meeting, and uh, it was fun. We pulled in food trucks and had our equipment demos here. We just I just gave a class inside of Matt's uh, shop there, so that was a good experience. And, you know, it's cool being off-site a little bit. And, you know, you do so much good work. You know, the Oregon State University, this is Nick Wyman. He's the extension specialist for hazelnuts, and I wanted to talk with you. Uh, specifically about some of the heat that we've experienced uh, this year has been pretty pretty harsh. It's, it's it seems unrelenting, and you know where I'm where I live in Fresno, it has just been blistering hot for so long, and uh, it sounds like you guys up here in Oregon are, are facing uh, not quite as hot, but still consistently hot temperatures, and that has an impact over time on on the hazelnut trees. You know, what can you tell us about that? In our research, we're really learning that um, hazelnuts are very sensitive to heat stress, and even with excellent irrigation, the trees tend to shut down, and it doesn't matter how much water is available in the soil. When um, the vapor pressure deficit is really high, then the trees tend to close, shut down photosynthesis and um, try to conserve the, the water that they have. And as a result, we're seeing a lot of symptoms on trees. You know, we had a really hot, dry summer last year. It was, in terms of total evapotranspiration, it was one of the highest in the last uh, 10 years last year. And trees look woke up this spring looking pretty rough um, from last year. Luckily, we had a cool spring, so there was some recovery. But now we've been back to the cycle of really hot and really dry for long periods of time. And it's, it's been tough on the trees. A lot of people are are seeing significant uh, dieback on, on their uh, canopies, and I think that is a combination of the heat stress. We had a record crop last year, so there's a few different factors that sort of come together that can cause these uh, symptoms of, of dieback on, on the hazelnut canopy. We've got so many different stages of growth in our hazelnuts here, you know, even just in the Willamette Valley. We've got all these new orchards that have come in, you know, some might be in their first or second year, with the polio variety coming out and a lot of excitement there. And then you have older orchards. We've got some as, what, what old is 100 years? Yeah, 100 plus years, yes. So I feel like the response, and not to mention the fact that people are irrigating their trees differently, whether they're using drip or, or not at all. I mean, historically, hazelnuts were dry land farmed. So um, that being said, I know it's kind of a lot to, to share, but, you know, in some of these variables, how, how, do, you, how do you recommend growers address uh, when, when conditions get so dry and hot? Right. Well, you summarize that very well. We have a mixture of um, irrigated orchards. Um, historically, we did not irrigate at all. And we were dependent on, on rainfall. In fact, Matt Miller's farm where we are right now, he's entirely dry land, always has been. He gets very good uh, productivity on his farm. But our research is showing there's definitely a benefit to irrigation. And as I described before the spring, when trees were coming out of dormancy this year, they were not showing a very full canopy. We could see some residual stress from the previous season there. But when I compared um, well irrigated trees to dryland trees, there tended to be more of that kind of stress on the well irrigated trees. Also, I think some growers are not paying close enough attention to the nutrition needs of their trees, and particularly if you're low in uh, potassium on your foliar tests at this time in the season, then your orchard might um, have more of a defoliation response to this hot weather, so that's not good either. Um, when it's hot and dusty, that can also bring on spider mites, which can sort of compound the issue on, on, on leaves that are barely hanging on anyway, and you can end up with a lot of defoliation. So anytime we're losing leaves before the end of the season, we are potentially exacerbating the stress because the tree is missing out on 
Uh, the good part of the season in the fall when conditions usually return to more moderate temperatures, we maybe get a little bit of rain, but we really return to more spring-like growing conditions when the trees can be really productive. So if the tree is defoliating before that time, you can miss out on an opportunity for, for recovery. And next year's productivity, right? That's right, yeah. So the trees are um, really, you have to think long-term when you're growing hazelnuts. We, we're showing that things that are going on now can have lasting effect into future seasons. So it's really a, a long, a long game. So I know there's, there's, you know, we don't have all the answers, but any final recommendations as far as how to mitigate that, that heat stress? Well, we're really interested in potential products that could be applied to the orchard to sort of uh, reduce the heat stress. And so we've been exploring that more and more, looking at some of these products to see if we can see reduced stress symptoms using, say, a pressure chamber to look at stem water potential. Also looking at stomatal conductance and photosynthetic activity. And we are seeing a positive response from some of these materials that are marketed to growers as mitigating um, heat stress. So I think going forward, these use of these types of products may become more commonplace if we continue to get these really warm and dry summers. But if growers can irrigate, it certainly does help. But as I mentioned before, it only helps to a point because the trees are just really um, drought averse. As you mentioned, they just sort of shut down, uh, go into life support. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So when they do that, the leaf temperatures really rise and then they become susceptible to uh, scorching burn on the leaf surface and actual um, death of green tissue, which is, is not good. Well, hey, thank you for the update, Nick. I hope it, it doesn't uh, consistently get stay this hot. Um, I almost feel like I brought the heat with us from Fresno. So, but hey, thanks for having us. Uh, it's been always a pleasure. Read more about these things in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, PacificNutProducer.com.